dear Steve, thank you for the introduction, the invitation to talk about uh, the I-14Y lab, which is one of the labs globally that uh, try to establish a, a process for certification and testing of open RAN components. And just in contrast to what you said, I highly appreciate that you mentioned that it's so important, but everything is important, so all the pieces must must fit together uh, uh, to make the, the open run run. And uh, we can contribute a, a tiny thing, and I'll talk about that. First, quick reminder, the, 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 the story about open run and, so, and why did we start it? It is more than just having an IU and a CU and a DU. So the, the intent is to be more modular to be more exchangeable or to reach a level of exchangeability of the modules. Uh, but there, there are other elements, especially in the open run uh, specifications. So that is, it has to be cloudified, cloud native. We want to work with open APIs to support the, the ecosystem and get the ecosystem on board. And there's also a strong attempt to improve the automation uh, of the, the run management and orchestration. So everything is, is related to the open run specification. And for sure, the main focus currently is uh, at uh, the exchangeability of radios and CUs, but uh, we also work on, on rig and, and uh, how to run different uh, apps on the rig and how to test them, so it's a lot more. Okay, also a little bit in preparation of the panel discussion. So what are the challenges? Um, so we, we have to say, we have to, to admit that the market adaptation is not that fast. So there, there are multiple reasons for that. Uh, I think some people or the community may have underestimated the complexity of the, the uh, technical side, but even more the complexity to adapt the, the processes and to understand the roles that come with such a new model and to fill the new roles. The other part is market volumes uh, for the components and modules. So it's one point to think about the classical telco market. So that's one cake and we can somehow hopefully slice them and, uh, and benefit from the uh, cost advantages and the flexibility advantages that come thanks to open run. On the other hand, it's better if the cake would grow. So, uh, because that may, may convince <coughs> uh, component vendors, module vendors to, to come on board. So, and we clearly see some indications uh, that enterprise market, campus markets are jumping on the boat of open run and that they see a benefit. This is not the super high complex solution that uh, usually the operators expect, but it can help the ecosystem to bring the entire solution into scale. On the other side, uh, cost for test and integration, especially cost for integration, that, that is one point and also the complexity to do the integration. That's also a learning for all the operators. And I think we still learn what the, the role of the operators could be. That the big players, uh, they consider themselves in a position to do at least uh, an important part of the integration work. There are other operators, smaller, they cannot do this integration. And, and even uh, if you look at the bigger ones, so it seems all of them have chosen uh, a roadmap where they work closely with one of the established players like Ericsson or Nokia. So just remember all the, the press releases uh, in the last uh, two years. So we also see a challenge concerning skills and people, so training, so, so that is uh, set a complex technology and Whenever you find someone who is experienced in, in open run and, and rate software for radio networks, uh, you can be, or you can expect that he'll get an offer from one of the, <laughs> the big players in, in the market.
market. So it is quite challenging, also again for, for the small companies. And also, and we heard that this morning, uh, or already in the earlier session, backward compatibility, that that was also underestimated. So there are a lot of things that uh, must work like 2G. There are a lot of other things uh, because all of the operators have employment, uh, deployments. <laughs> so these brownfield scenarios and managing the brownfield scenarios creates a lot of, of delay and, and uh, additional effort for the for the industry. So it, uh, I would say also from that perspective, a 5G standalone enterprise solution is, is much easier and can, the ecosystem, can help to develop the ecosystem. So now to the consortium and the I-14Y. What is I-14Y about and how do we address the challenges? So first of all, this I-14Y is a publicly funded project and we are, I would say, kind of model of the ecosystem because there are two operators on board and we're really proud that we come closer to a level to share requirements and develop jointly test plans so that that's a I hope a big step for the ecosystem as well. Then on the other side, there are system integrators, Capgemini, you may have heard that already today, and uh, Nokia is one of the partners in i14Y. Then uh, test system vendors like uh, Rode and Schwarz, and a couple of smaller companies from the Berlin ecosystem, they provide either experience with uh, test automation or with cloudification or with uh, ONAP, so which is the, the automation framework. We also work with associated partners uh, representing also the ecosystem. And last but not least, there are supporting partners. And uh, our impression was just a kind of uh, story where <laughs> when we invented this i 14 y So we were approached by uh, TIP to become a, a TIP community lab and we were happy and so we established this uh, community lab. Then the Oran guys guy, hey, don't you want to be uh, an Oran OTIC? And then the guys from ONF appeared <laughs> and want to have a, a European test center. And we said, okay, perhaps we can do one lab and we share the resources and you become supporting partners. So why should we establish all those uh, uh, different labs or flavors of labs? And, and finally they agreed. And <coughs> I think that that's the right approach. And again, it tells us something about the ecosystem, what the sharing approach is or what kind of sharing approaches we need. All right. So then what, what is our mission? So we would like to develop the, uh, test infrastructure and the, the test offerings in a sense that we have a kind of one-stop uh, stop testing. So that means company can appear at the R14Y lab and we provide the reference configuration, we provide the test equipment, they plug it in and we, we run a test. So that's, that's a little bit the naive picture, uh, but uh, also the vision. So that means we run multiple of this generally valid reference configurations. We provide sharing of knowledge and sharing of test resources. Hopefully we can help the companies to be faster with the innovation and uh, with development of their new services. And that's also learning from operating the i 14 y the last two years. So co smaller companies, they really ask for a kind of co-development because if you start with this super complex mobile radio ecosystem, there are so many specifications and so many things you must consider. And, and it's always good uh, to have some partners there that, especially for the smaller companies, partners who guide them through, through this uh, wood of, of, of standards and specifications. And uh, yes, we, we address the reduction of costs for integration and for testing. So also, and, and again, it's, it's about sharing. So let me explain briefly, and also a little bit oversimplified how that could look like. So in, there could be one approach, so each operator decides, okay, I work in the, 
in the open run ecosystem. I'll take the different components. Uh, they hopefully you'll get it. And then they run all the tests needed to bring it into life in their own individual labs. And our expectation is that there is a lot of overlap between the different operators. And some people say it's 80%, some people say it's 75%. There might be a varying number, but it's clear there is a lot of overlap in those <coughs> testing. And, and we want to address this area of uh, common interests and common specifications and common testing for hopefully a lot of operators. And that doesn't mean that there are operator, still operator specific testing uh, when it comes closer to their specific designs, to their specific uh, automation framework, etc. So they want to integrate that even the backward compatibility is, is different for different uh, operators. So that is still on their side, but uh, for the i14y or any lab with the same approach uh, that i14y has, uh, we expect that there is a, an overlap of 80%. So that is the, the European view for sure. And uh, there's also a, a global view. So I think Stefan <laughs> already showed uh, that there are multiple, uh, multiple uh, labs uh, globally and we try to align with them and figure out how we can share the effort there and how we can, can minimize the overlap between the, the test activities of the different labs. And that has to do again with uh, the test specifications, but also with sharing the results of the tests and sharing of the uh, results of the conformance tests and batches. So, and uh, we have already established a, uh, a strong collaboration with uh, Sonic Lab at, uh, uh, in the UK and with ITRI from <coughs> Taiwan and uh, we're currently in the phase to, to uh, agree on, on common, either common test plans or split of work so that uh, we can also help the, the ecosystem from that perspective and also share costs. Because you must keep in mind to, to establish a reference configuration and to run all those test systems that is super expensive. It can easily cost 10 million to build such a lab. And uh, therefore it's so important to look for solutions to share the costs and to share also the effort and uh, to share the test results. Another point is uh, how we work with the, the operators. I already mentioned that we are proud to have two operators, in at least the, the German arm of Vodafone and Telefonica on board here. And this is, if you look at the, the broader ecosystem that is related or that is a subset of this so-called MOU group. You may have heard a uh, couple of European operators have joined forces and uh, created this MOU group to support the development of Open Run in Europe. And they uh, already released a couple of high level requirements. I think every mobile world congress, they, they send a new. No, not <laughs> no oh, you sense that. <laughs> it will come soon. <laughs> uh, so they, they release a, a new set of requirements agreed between the, the European operators. And that is about general front hole. It's also about security and about energy efficiency. So. I think everything is accessible for the public, so just search on the internet. So we take those requirements, nail it down specific to the uh, German operators, and then we adopt the, the test specifications coming from Open Run, from ORAN, and from, from TIP especially, and uh, adapt it to the needs of the three partner operators, and then we run the test. <coughs> Sorry, we run the tests. And we want to work with, with all the partners or with all the organizations in the ecosystem. So that means any basic uh, conformance test, any end-to-end -end batch is in the first step based on the ORAN TIFG specification. 
Any test in the domain of RIC is currently based on the test specifications of TIP. So there was this uh, broad group, uh, RIA, who specified a couple of use cases for RIC, and they also specified at least high-level test, uh, high tests or a high-level, um, they did a high-level test specification. What does that mean? So they did, they s describe how to run the test, but they do not specify when the test can be considered as passed or not. So that is a weak point. And we see that by the, by the way also in other specifications and we want to improve that. So that is one task for the I14Y lab to feed it back to the ecosystem and say, hey, we want to see more concrete specifications conformance, uh, concerning performance, concerning uh, uh, topology, concerning other parameters that are relevant for the end-to-end -end test. So, yeah, so and then I said we already uh, have issued a couple of uh, certificates and now we work with, with the uh, with OTIC and with uh, TIP as an authorized lab. And here's the, the result. So we have uh, issued an open front hole certificate for VVDN in the, uh, I think two weeks ago, it was the handover. And uh, the learning and the, the important part here is that requires also a lot of pre-integration. And that is also the point where we can share costs because nobody else needs to do the pre-integration when we issue the, uh, especially the detailed test report about all the settings that we have taken to run those uh, front hole certificate. We also issued, mentioned by, by Cap Gemini already, we issued an end-to-end -end batch for the entire chain, and no, for the uh, CODU stack, but end-to-end -end batch means that it is integrated in a complete chain of an R of multiple RUs, I have to say, and uh, on the other side, uh, a, a mobile core as well. So that is a completely running system, and this, the, it's, the batch is addressing the specific functions of uh, the CODU stack. That runs successfully as well, and again, we estimated when, <laughs> when we planned the first uh, test, we said, okay, that might be three <coughs> weeks. So finally, it turned out it was more uh, two and a half months to, to uh, run those tests. And that is, okay, keep in mind, it's the learning. It's the first, the first round, so now we know, know what to do. We have learned a lot about the automation. We improve the automation on our side. We learn, have learned how to integrate that. And that's again a value how such an open lab like I14Y can contribute to the ecosystem. So we still work on an, an IoT batch with a, a another IU vendor. Uh, we have finalized one uh, conform um, PCI test uh, based on use case 11 of TIP that was issued at uh, at the uh, Mobile World Congress as well. You can find that at, at TIP as well. And uh, we still work on uh, another use case and we still work a lot on energy efficiency and security because that was a specific requirement from MOU group to develop the test scenarios. And again, here the challenges that we need to specify and we work closely, by the way, with other organizations. We need to specify the parameters, how to test it, and what is the baseline for an energy efficiency test, and how to measure the improvement by an XR person. So that requires still a lot of work. Um, from a broader picture, so I've explained certification badging. We even offer lab as a service. That means that just the company startup or so, they, they appear in the lab and we jointly run a, a, a test together with them. It's more this kind of, of co-development. We provide tests as a service. That means uh, a TIFG-based uh, test, for example, or a TIP-based 
uh, uh, test, but without uh, reporting it to the public so that, this, so that the company can learn. And finally, we work a lot with the ecosystem in setting up plug fests, workshops, uh, training events, helping some companies and upskilling their people. That is also important that people can do some, some hands-on work in, in the lab. So this is more or less the, the portfolio uh, and uh, the, the offering of the I-14Y lab. As I said, we are still a publicly funded project. We also work on a plan how to make it more sustainable in a sense that it can run even without public funding. So we are looking for partner, partner operators. We work on a business model and uh, the last point I want to say is we work with the ecosystem by our nice I-14Y lab summits and you are invited to join us this September. It is usually a, a good event for the ecosystem with interesting presentations, with inspiring presentations. It is co-organized with the Berlin Open Run Working Week where the academic partners mainly talk about AI for open run and such things. So it could be also very interesting. So please check on our website and uh, you are invited to come to Berlin. Thank you. <laughs>